So before I begin, I want to offer an apology to all of you out there that were expecting this video to come out yesterday. The reason for it, which I want to give a clarification, is that I wasn't feeling too well. Like yesterday morning, I woke up around like 3 o'clock in the morning, like 3 a.m. my time, and my stomach was just not feeling good. And let's just say it got gradually worse throughout the day. And I don't really know what it was, but I am feeling a lot better today. I'm still sore and stuff, but overall, I don't know if it was, like, let's say food poisoning or if it was a 24-hour stomach virus or whatever. I really have no idea, but I wasn't really feeling too well yesterday, and I was, like, in no condition to really sit down and talk because, honestly, I looked pale as a ghost, and I just... Ooh, it was bad. Like, I, I just... I really couldn't even really get up out of bed, but... Anyways, I feel a lot better today. I'm a little bit sore, but you know, even though I am I feel sickish doesn't mean that everything must stop. I still have to continue moving forward, so here I am. But I just quickly wanted to apologize to all of you guys yesterday that were wondering if you don't follow my Twitter, you most likely had no idea. You know, do not worry, I did not drop a series. But anyways, let us begin. This episode, once again, just to get the quick little notes out of the way. We have another little usage of CGI in the middle of this episode, or actually towards the end, that is very reminiscent of the last episode review I did when I talked about how, you know, the studio working on this is going out of their way to really showcase the gravity of the situation, that, you know, these orcs marching in are very scary, and even though there is obvious CGI in the background of these orcs marching, the way the animators are actually subtly hiding this with either the scenery to mixing in regular character drawings like 2D animation, it really makes me appreciate this series. I know CGI is something that many personally like, I can understand that, but once again we got a little brief scene of that in this episode that just really shows that the studio, they are at the very least trying to hide the 3D animation from making this series kind of look a little bit bad or cheap in some ways, so I do appreciate that. Now that that is out of the way though, Let's talk about the beautiful voice acting. I know it's kind of weird to start off my episode review just talking about voice acting. Usually I wait till the end of the episode review to do so, but it's honestly something I just really need to talk about after watching this episode because it's just very impressive. I have been told that the um, the voice actor, I think, I could be wrong here, correct me in the comments below, but I believe the voice actor of Rimuru is a completely new voice actor from what I've been told. And if that really is the case, Holy crap, the voice acting truly just blows me away. I'm really just blown away by how good the voice acting is just for the character alone of Rimuru. But it's not just that though. I mean, a lot of the little voice acting lines throughout this episode really give a whole new life to these characters that you really just cannot get from the manga for obvious reasons because of lack of voice. But it's just the way the characters express themselves throughout this episode really made me appreciate just the hard work that's being put into this series. I know I constantly mention how great the art animation is, like the color palette to just the adaptation being fully, you know, adapting like the light novel slash manga. I appreciate stuff like that, but there's a lot of times where many tend to overlook the voice acting because honestly, some people don't really like to pay attention to it. But the voice acting in this episode is something that really cannot be overlooked because when you have the whole stuff with Rimuru and how Rimuru was reacting towards the uh, beginning of this episode with Shion's cooking and how he was getting very suspicious, like, whoa, whoa, is this a common, like, cliche and all that? Or the entire situation with Gobta and how he went out of his way way to showcase his skills, and then Rimuru was like, is he a prodigy? And just the shock, you know, the shock in his voice. I just love the change of tone. But it's not just Rimuru's voice acting, it's also the situation with uh, Ga Gabiru. I think that's how you pronounce his name. But basically, the lizard dude, you know, the guy that's like the prince of the lizard men, when he was talking and all that, and he was just summoning everybody up, he's like, wait, nobody's weaklings and all that, and he's just like, wow, and all that to Shion, which I can't show the picture on screen because YouTube wouldn't like that. It's pretty hilarious just how the voice acting was done, and I'm just like, oh my god, like, this is, this is why, you know, I really love Slime, because even though it has its serious moments, it also has its comedy moments that really just fit in. Normally, scenes like that with, like, a Lizardman or, like, a character coming in is like, wow, just focusing on the, the perverted aspects of things. I would normally be a little bit upset because it's kind of, you know, getting away from what really matters in the series, but somehow the way the series mixes and stuff like that, it doesn't really take away from what the series is about, which I do truly appreciate. But anyways, though, just voice acting, I think was spot on, and I think just needs to be complimented, and, you know, honestly, I don't think voice actors are really complimented enough as is when it comes to just anime coming out every single week. But okay, let's get into the core content of what this episode was about. So, the Lizardmen decided to confront 
Rimuru's entire organization or his group to figure out if they will join him or not. Now, at first glance, when you see this Lizardman dude, especially after, you know, the last episode, now this episode, it's clear as day that the Lizardman Prince, he's a... Uh, He's a little bit ditzy. He is someone that thinks he's better than what he truly is. Like, you have it to where he's being built up by everybody around him. Maybe he is a good dude. Maybe, like, in deep down, he's really strong and he is capable of doing a lot of things. But when you compare him to someone like Rimuru's group, obviously, he's not really going to be able to do much. And you can see that the people around him are kind of blinding him, putting, like, you know, a wool over his eyes. He's not being able to see the bigger picture and really understand that you don't just walk into, you know, conversations like peace talks or working together with someone like that. I mean, the way he walked in and addressed himself, thinking he was all high and mighty, that he was important and all that, and that, hey, you should serve me because I'm so amazing, that's not the way you begin, you know, talk with another, you know, faction that's around in your territory, because that's how you start wars. That's how you start conflict with other individuals. He was definitely not showing a side that was befitting of a ruler. If there's one thing you can get from him, at the very least, even if he's strong or weak, is the fact that he, at the very least, doesn't have a good comprehension of what you should say to another faction when you're trying to seek their help. You should never go out of your way and say, work under me, serve under me, and all that. You have direwolf, serve under me, or just completely disregard a slime being in charge. Yes, I know a normal series, writing and all that, slimes are normally not that strong, besides Dungeons and Dragons, which I've been told many times now, but basically, you know... I can understand why he would act like that, but even then, though, you don't just go out of your way and insult the main leader of the faction like that. You, you just don't do that. That's not a way you start talks with someone. So, I mean, overall, when you see the way he presented himself in this episode, besides just his quirky personality that was a little bit annoying, because you can even see Rimuru was getting a little bit upset and all the others around him, too... The fact is, is that the man right now, he still is very immature and he has a lot to learn before he could probably even lead his people. Now, like I said, that's not even looking at if he's strong or not. Because, I mean, we still gotta look at that. Gabata and all of them are very, very strong. Rimuru has blessed him with names, which makes them very strong. And yes, the Lizardman Prince has been blessed with a name as well. But it doesn't change the fact that, you know, the reason why all the others underneath Rimuru are so strong is because he has Veldra inside of him, which is potentially giving him a lot more strength to be able to name people. It just explains a lot more. And especially after, you know, absorbing Ifrit and all that, you know, he's obviously a lot stronger and he's able to definitely name powerful people or make them a lot more powerful. So, I mean, when you look at everything and all the little facts we've had built up since the very beginning, it makes sense why Gobta was able to do what he did. And so, we can't really look at the Lizardman Prince and say, oh, he's automatically weak, because we still gotta remember that normal creatures and stuff, you know, normally they don't have a name, which makes them weaker. But on top of that, you know, it also depends on the person, too, if they actually get strong or not. So, there you go. But okay, anyways, yeah, I think overall the impression that the Lizardman Prince did, I think, is going to be very negative for a lot of people. I think many are going to be like, get this guy out of here. Like, he, he's just so irrelevant and all that. I mean, this man lost to Gobta, and I know everybody's looking at Gobta as, like, you know, comedic relief or a joke. But after seeing this episode, I think many are going to start becoming fans of his character. And so, I want to break down and talk about why Gobta is just such a fantastic character. Number one... He was the first person to figure out how to summon his direwolf through, like, the shadow in his, like, in his shadow. He was the first person to really figure this out. If you back up a couple episodes ago when he was trapped and all that in the Dwarven Kingdom and Rimuru left him, he summoned his direwolf to save him once, you know, Rimuru had him trapped in his silk. So it shows, even though it might have been just an accident... Gopta does have some ways of being like a prodigy. He is definitely intelligent. He's definitely someone that can learn very quickly. And he's demonstrated once again in this episode that he's able to learn and take things from people after just seeing it once. For instance, the kick he did against the Lizardman Prince, I don't know how many of you recognize this, but the kick he did was very identical to how Rimuru kicked him a couple episodes back. You remember when, you know, Rimuru was basically insulted and then he kicked him real quick? It was a fantastic kick. That was the exact same kind of kick you saw from Gobta in this episode. So he learned from Rimuru's actions on how to kick like that, which is very impressive. And then also using, like, the shadow to jump behind someone and all that, it's very cool. And I have to say that, you know, Gobta as a character, he's highly underestimated. And it really does make you wonder, is Rimuru someone that is not able to properly judge Gobta as a character because he just looks so goofy or weird compared to everyone else? Or is he actually someone that truly is potentially going to be one of the strongest a part of 
Green Room's arsenal when it comes to his military force. So let's actually get into that. Goft has always been a strange character. I mean, when you think about it, his appearance before he was ever named was the exact same. Th this was before he was named. He was the exact same appearance. His appearance never changed, but when he got named into Gavta, you know, he still stayed the same, which is very interesting because it just shows that this man is absolute perfection. He is someone that you really can't, you know, perfect any more than he already is because, I mean, his form is already the embodiment of peak performance. So, yeah, I think uh, this episode's gonna open everybody's eyes up to Gavta and that he clearly is one of the better characters in terms of strength-wise and you should not underestimate him. Now, anyways, let's talk about the uh, general interactions with the characters, like, you know, Xion and Shuna and all that. Let's talk about how, how they were with Rimuru in this episode. So, the general, like, casual slice life interactions at the beginning of the episode. It was pretty much exactly how it was in the manga, except obviously with the color palette and voice acting making it a lot better. I just love seeing the characters bickering over Rimuru, even though it is very cliche. It is something you would constantly see in, let's say, a harem or a rom-com or something. It's still pretty funny by the way it was done, especially seeing how you have this, you know, ogre princess and then this other ogre just competing with each other over Rimuru's love and this man is literally being stretched like a slime. It's just it's hilarious to see because Rimuru's body you know actually can stretch and normally in a manga situation or you know light novel whatever you have it to where characters complaining like if you guys keep stretching me back and forth you're gonna split me in half but in reality knowing how Rimuru is he definitely could be stretched back and forth and split in half because we know he can make body doubles so it's just funny to think how that cliche could be expanded upon and he legit it could split to be with both of them if he really choose to actually do something like that. So, uh, okay, what else is there left to discuss? I guess, uh, Xion's cooking. So, Xion, she is almost perfect in every single aspect besides her cooking. And I guess in some cases her attitude, but overall, her cooking. Oh my god. Like, look, I know it's an ancient cliche. It's something that pops up all the time in romance series, slice of life series, harems. It's a common thing that happens. But even though it's common, and I've seen it so many times, more times than I can count, for some reason, it never gets old, especially by the way this scene was done. Like, just seeing how Rimuru reacted, and then you had the great sage. It's like, if you put the spoon angled at the right, it will surely save your life. I'm like, oh my god. They're just like... I, I was laughing. I, I, I just loved the way the moment was done and just how Gavta took the fall and he fell down and all that and he gained poison resistance from it. Oh my god, I love this series. It's one of the reasons why I fell in love with the manga when I was reading it, just because of how enjoyable this series is and it can just bring a smile to your face. So to wrap up this video, the last thing to really talk about is the Dryad. So at the end, an ancient being like a Dryad pops up to talk with Rimuru about the orcs entering into the forest that an orc lord is coming and it needs to be dealt with. And, you know, I'm really happy. Like, when I first read this in the manga, I was really concerned that when Rimuru was talking about the Dryad and all that, that the Dryad was going to be some hideous, disgusting creature. Because there's a lot of series I've read over the years when, you know, a character's like, oh, this character's going to be very beautiful or whatever. All of a sudden, it turns out this character's very ugly or hideous. I'm very happy that the Dryad didn't turn out to be very ugly. I mean, yes, we already have enough beautiful characters as is, but I just, I really am happy that, you know, that old cliche wasn't used, and the Dryad does look very beautiful, and you gotta imagine that this Dryad most likely knows a lot, because remember, Dryads are people of the forest, they're forest spirits, they're able to be able to, like, communicate with the woods, the environment itself, so obviously, if there's something going on with the land, they will know of it, so this Dryad's gonna know a lot more information than normal folk, and so I'm looking forward to seeing how the information is revealed to all of our characters, but with that, I think I'm gonna end this video here, let me know your thoughts in the comments below, if you enjoy my content, you know, please subscribe. If you like this video, please leave a like. And if you want to get notified for whenever I upload a video, please click the bell icon down below. And with that, Chibi out.